This is Spotlight, a biographical series that features people who've attained significant success in their chosen fields. Today, we continue our conversation with Mr. Joseph Kagudi. Listen to his thoughts on the role of the media in the face of terrorism, devolution, and the whole question of national security. My name is Geoffrey Mungai. You can talk to us via Twitter at KBC English. The hashtag is Spotlight Kagudi. Devolution is good because it's giving, uh, it's just like the, um, the DDC, you know, the old DDC. The District Development Committees. Yes. yes. Uh, it is like um, we had a project called the uh, EEC, European Economic Community Micro uh, Projects, where you give them money, they sit down and decide on their priorities and implement those priorities subject to the audit and uh, certain guidelines. That's what they are doing. The, the 14 functions, they are meant to be the highest in consultation. Very consultative way of administering uh, the devolved government. As to whether that consultation, because that's what was meant, is going on. Because you don't consult you don't consult on foreign affairs because that's a, that's why it's national government. It's a national the government issue. Defense matters, security matters. You consult, but not on a certain decision levels, because like uh, some of the areas we have in trouble uh, in trouble now, they are they are politics driven insecurity. You don't hand over that docket to that general group or politicians. Because they will mess you up even more. You are like the the one you, you hear of the Pokot, Turkana, Samburu. There is no way you can get a thousand boys going to raid without the blessings of elders traditionally. You say that a member of parliament did not understand that. A chief did not understand that uh, there is going to be that raid. They even said it's ignorance. They tell the other colleagues, I, Mujahadari, the Mutavamiwa, Mutavamiwa, you know, on the other side. So this issue that uh, we've preoccupied ourselves with, it is a terrible, terrible mistake to fail to strengthen the institution of the coordinators, called administration, particularly at the uh, regional level so that they are able to handle situations on the ground and take decisions uh, in an autonomous manner because of the way they are. Remember, mm -hmm. you are an African. You have a home. You are the husband. The wife and the children expect certain leadership from you. Look at that from the presidency. You call him an imperial president, you deny him uh, a lot of uh, kind of uh, powers, and then you now come blaming him. He is not doing, he is not doing, but it's you who denied it uh, for the other one. Then you get a gullible, say, political wing, where even when people are crying and they are mourning, theirs is to call press conference and start causing more, more injury, blaming one center instead of asking, what the hell are you doing, county commissioners and your security teams? What are you doing, you regional coordinators? Because that's the way it should work. And uh, that's what I was, ab I was about to ask you, where the county commissioner comes in all this. Is the county commissioner the new provincial commissioner? So we do not have provinces, what we have are counties. Is, is that the equivalent of what we had as PC? Fine. The national, um, when you look at it, the infrastructure is this. The National Assembly has done its job. It did create, through the National Government uh, Coordination Act, powers to create those institutions of the county commissioner and the regional coordinators. It did. And give them even the powers to, to give them names as they, they didn't fit, subject to concurrence with the Public Service Commission. That's the National Assembly. The president did even call and issued executive order number three, delegating those responsibilities who are there. Unfortunately, the fourth power of a government called the media, 
they have never recognized before the state right y- yes the first state is uh, the legislature the second is executive the third is uh, judiciary the fourth is the, the for the pillars of government the fourth power has not as yet admitted that they are part of government i want to tell them they are part of government but they do not appear to see it that way it's just like like i see our opposition instead of being loyal opposition of the government so the 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 the, the family help in the management of the country and the citizens they now go to an area where they create pressure group pressure so that the others are not working the the fourth estate is the most popular the one which is believed by everybody and is the one which sets the image of the country if you want the country to cry throughout the night the fourth power will make it if you want to bring pride of the country hi 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 they will be there i give you an example Eth- ethiopia the other day they arrested some ethiopians in uh, in uh, in libya but the 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 because of uh, the angling of al shabab they now draw a very very strong giants holding some little like dwarfs ethiopians with their knives the ethiopians said this is manipulated we are not going to have it and we are not going to yield as a result the image of the country was brought back what do we have here al shabab would like uh, the, the little godane he had said this that this war will be fought on three areas that is the late godane al shabab leader yes right and he had uh, put it this way that uh, the first um, one is to cause maximum injury maximum fear maximum publicity so if they go to an area and attack either garissa or lam or they go to westgate if the media is gullible they take over from godane and spread fear before we forget they tell us lest you forget you therefore promoting the enemy and that's why we have been telling the media please stop bringing the garissa issues to us please stop bringing us to westgate because we are not even number 10 in the attack of uh, of uh, of terrorists maybe that's why we don't want to get maybe that's why there is so much publicity the more the more you create fear the more you give morale to the enemy all wars are fought on information disinformation and uh, so forth i'm glad you talk about information and dis- disinformation uh, there's something i want you to listen mm. because we've been told about grievances and historical injustices and things like that so I don't know whether this is one of the misinformations and things yes. like that. Yes. I had uh, a retired general Daniel Opande mm. here mm. and we spoke matter security and this is what he had to say. During, you know, the the shifter campaign, if we talk about the shifter, you know, the shifter war. The ba- the battlefield was won. Yes, the, the battlefield was won. The battle was won. The battle was won. The battle was won. Right. And I also believe that other other aspects of stabilizing the then uh, NFD which included bringing development right. uh, infrastructure right. and and if there are those other politicians who are perhaps in league with the bandits then they are won over hmm? and the populace right. because i remember when i first went to NFD they used to look at us local citizens they used to look at us as if we are not you know a part of of uh, their environment they used to refer to us as what we nyuele ngumu nyuele ngumu and that is somebody who was you know born bred and uh, is uh, in the nfd which was part of kenya right that is general pande yeah. talking matter security talking grievances well he talks about winning over local winning leaders he, t- he talks about taking development infrastructure and all these things and and we are told this is what creates these are among the things that create uh, uh, grievances these festering wounds marginalization and this is what breeds insecurity whether it's local insecurity whether it's terrorism is this what you are referring to as missing the for the power right when i was uh, uh, in kwale and um, 
even Kilifi with the, the governor King, telling governor King, the more you tell your children that they are marginalized, the more you 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 bring the youthfulness to go and fight in the system. You the more you help uh, Al Shabab to recruit using those things. If you look at the budget, Turkana is way ahead in budget than uh, most of uh, the counties. Wajia, Wajia is so way ahead. But if you continue just hammering that you are marginalized, you, you don't have jobs, you don't have this, as if you are the only one in the country, therefore, we look at you as a politician. Every time there is an incident like Garissa, we see instead of telling Al Shabab boys, Al Shabab means youth. Instead of directing your attention to tell the youth you are destroying our infrastructure, you are killing people who are teaching us, you are killing the people who are, who are part and parcel of us as a country, you are now dividing the country on religious lines. Instead of directly telling them off, they started telling off the government. And therefore, that information, because the leaders Actually, 50, 53% of the impact of uh, counter-violence extremism, 57% is achieved by the leaders talking together against the violence. 40% communities now talking, the way the leaders are also saying. And this, is this what the northeastern province... Yes, that's uh, what uh, they're they are doing they, now. That's what they sought that's to do immediately after yes, the Garissa attack. Yes, and then 70% you use the, now the, for the guns and uh, the boots. For now, if you look at the a politician once they are talking, if you see that instead of telling those in court say you are destroying our tour tourism, they always go you are to the government, blaming the government, blaming the president. The president, his role with his askaris is not as high as a policy and uh, coordinating the country so that it is one and uh, helping the country go on that information line which is building the country. Just tell me, when you look at uh, those who keep on reminding us about Westgate, about uh, Mombasa or about Ramu, can, are they promoting Kenya, Easter, Hili, Heshima? Because the fourth power, the media, is the one which determines... Mm. That's a line in our national anthem. Right? Yes, it mm. is the one which determines mm. the, the, the kind of uh, bravery, the kind of pride of the nation. It is the media. If the media does not, uh, if the media goes to where Godane is, so if Godane issued um, what they call uh, a YouTube kind of IT thing saying we will do, we will do, we will do, and I see a national media in the country delaying it, see, who is this media house serving? Because they ought to kill it. Let it go, be consumed by government in order to protect the people. Why is it coming to us so that we see that the Al-Shabaab is the strongest? I have seen, for instance, uh, the photos that uh, come uh, on, our, on our newspapers. You will never see short people. And you know what you do, you with camera people. You go down and you create a giant. So you create the giants. <laughs> You're saying the, the the photos are manipulated. Yes, <laughs> and and you see the the chains of a lot of a lot of resources, meaning that they are they have more firepower than they have seen with their police officers and the military. It is because we have a fourth state, a fourth power of government, which has not agreed that they are part of government. I'm sorry about it if you don't agree. But that is the way I see well, it. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure there are a lot of people who don't agree with you out there. And Mr. it is Kagudi. good that they, they that you know, they but it's good, but it's good and, that and, you speak and your that, mind. That and, I and, tell them this and we have this conversation. Way. I see it. Right. That always we are in a, war, in a war. We are now currently, the world is in a war. And the war we are in is a war without boundaries. It's a hit and run. When, when the president of Tanzania addressed the nation last time, he said Al-Shabaab is even attacking our police stations. When they attacked that, that uh, station in, in Tanga and they hid, the police could not uh, deal with it for two days. They had to now get the army. They killed that story. It did not even go to CNN. If it was uh, in Kenya, 
uh, you would have seen uh, the minister or IG flying there. And therefore, it gets CNN, BBC, and it gets Al Jazeera and everybody. You're listening to Spotlight. Today, we're speaking with Mr. Joseph Kagudi, who's charged with the responsibility of creating a security-conscious nation via Know Your Neighbor, better known as the Nyumbakumi Initiative. You can talk to us via Twitter at KBC English. The hashtag is Spotlight Kagudi. Our security forces have been criticized by the same media that you're blaming and the opposition too about their response mm. uh, towards security inadequate uh, you know a lack of preparedness and lack of uh, responding in time do you think this is a valid criticism of our security let forces? me tell you no country at war who allow their media to demoralize their forces irrespective of the kind of mistakes they make it is horrible it's terrible it is unpatriotic and it is dangerous. You are not replacing that military with the with the media houses. You are not. So what you do, you normally would uh, kill it, kill that story, but you get the editor telling the others the information they have. It is very dangerous. Is it during the um, the time of Wilson Churchill? He allowed a whole battalion to go. It's in history. A battalion. He cover wiped out three. A battalion, one thousand. Two, to, to send a message that we are at war. And what did he say? I want all your men, your young people, your young men. I want all your, your resources, all your vehicles, your wealth to go to fight the war. And you could not get anybody going opposite that because you are at war. Right. The more, the more you demoralize your, 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 your forces, I saw them... Uh, some useless media house, I think. I saw some going to demoralize our KDF, the other side. They had done a lot of work. What Americans could not be able to do, KDF had done. They had even uh, taken over Kisimayu. And remember what happened uh, with the Americans? They had to, to withdraw. Now, Ethiopia is another one. Ethiopia goes all the way to attack the mother to, to Mogadishu. You cannot get the media house there attacking their forces. You are demoralizing them so that you get what? So, let's balance. You need to get to share the information. When they killed uh, that journalist, you remember the journalist who was uh, was was uh, killed? Uh, he was hacked. Who was beheaded. He beheaded. Right. What did CNN say? By ISIS. Yes. Right. What did they say? will do our patriotic job. They did not show it. They did not repeat that story. It died. Right. Now, go back to what happened when, when they were burning Ladan. You remember they recently they were burning Ladan? Yes. And we had the, the Olympic there. Did you see any photo, any story about Ladan? If it was Kenya, we would still be recollecting, come see where, where we burned, come do this and this. I am saying, let us not over-demoralize the country I'm not um, uh, within the, the, the military. And even if even five years from now, I will not have changed. I will still want, and you know I'm afraid of the media. I did a campaign against drug abuse based on the media alone. Even the current one of uh, Nyubakumi, Usarama Amsingi, we are basing on the media. But when I find that they are, they, they, they are likely to undermine the country, I'm quick to say, Right, because we have time constraints and I want us to talk about two things. I want us to talk about the claim for devolution of certain aspects of security by governors. I want you to listen to someone who has a slightly different view, view uh, about, you know, our disciplined forces and what needs to be done. Uh, Musalia Mary. You know, you can imagine when somebody who's very junior and then he's catapulted to become the head of all these people who are his bosses in in a disciplined force or in a regimental uh, structure, you can see what it can cause. The guy at the top does not know how to issue instructions to people who have been his bosses and who he himself knows are more deserving than him. On the other hand, this other guy does not know how to receive orders for a man who he has regarded as his, his junior and he was mentoring him right. maybe to... Maybe he had seen some promotion. Maybe he had handled his file. And he said, this one is deserving. And maybe you're even recommending him to go for a certain cause. And then the next thing is right on top of you. Now, 
When you have a security system that is experiencing such challenges, then you tell me what the dangers can be. So you think we are not honoring meritocracy? That's it. Meritocracy must be looked at very carefully in these security agencies. It must be. Your view? By April last year, as a, the National Task Force for, for Community Policing, we had listened to all the 47 security teams. And by December, we had listened to 289 sub-county security teams when assessing how the community policing clusters were being established. We can tell you for sure that the disjointment is there, the one he is talking. We can tell you for sure that because of uh, certain aspects of the posting and deployment, there seems to be no system, uh, a grid system, which will reduce having uh, competition amongst the, the, the services and even bickering. At one stage, we saw on a single operation where we have a problem, a challenge, two operation orders. For anybody who knows what an operation order is, it means you consolidate all your, 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 your logistics to one to go and meet that threat. Once you get the AP with one and the, the um, Kenya police with one, then it's a total confusion, total mess. And that's why even community, all the earlier community policing, you could get uh, one is a uh, provincial musician has theirs, then you get uh, AP have theirs, police have theirs, to the extent that we now have harmonized the whole of it. And we have even told the police you are not in charge of security service, security alone, because the Kenya wildlife service, to the extent of the wildlife, they are they must be to policing. The forest likewise. KRA, IMA, immigration, you are all government policing agents. And now we want the citizen as a first line of defense, that's international, the citizen is the first line of defense, to join you and therefore we must educate you that you listen to the citizen, what the citizen says, what he hears, they say, what they suspect they say, so that you also respond and the country becomes closer. Where you come to some people being promoted, it's because of there being no systemic good system of uh, doing those kind of things. Sometimes you get somebody from a corporal going to an inspector, sometimes uh, to a chief inspector. That we, we have been told. That we have been told. That it uh, sometimes happens because of the level of discretion exercised, which is not right. Now we have a, even a bigger one. The deals, good deals, uh, say the lot were earning 40,000 in a division. This is quote unquote, quote, it's correct. This is, I know I have a friend. Was a deal, a successful deal in the national government, is recruited to go to their home division and is given a salary of 170,000. 170,000. From 40,000? Yes, mm -hmm. because um, if they have left the national government, they have gone to the county government. Is very, very dangerous. Right. Um, I want us to come to community policing, what we know as Nyumba Kumi. Usalama wa um, Usalama? Wa msingi. Usalama wa msingi. Yes. Right. What stage are we at with regard to the implementation of that model of community policing? Thank you. Every country has a model. Every country. And because every country has a model, we have a guideline and the implementation is uh, going on well. It is taking root. As at December, 210,393 clusters had been established, each with a chairman, with a committee. And therefore, what is now remaining is we raise the level of security education of the citizens and we raise the security education of the government policing agents and we tell them you go to work as a team, government is teamwork, so that the, 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 the results of any information or anything which is being done, it is harmonized and we stop the blame game. Except mm -hmm. we've no, we assessed uh, Turkana, Madera, Garissa and uh, Wajia. We did not give them a certificate of clearance. So we have quite a lot of uh, other work to, to do. We have a bit of work to do. We've, uh, for those four, we haven't uh, as yet cleared it. And what you saw in Garissa is what we had really advised the government uh, they are telling us. 
that there is a problem. There is a problem. Through Kana, we had advised there is a problem. We, we, are not, we are not so much surprised. So it is taking root and the crime, as crime, not even security, crime is reducing, subsiding as uh, the community policing is taking root. And for, for you to know what I mean is at uh, your village level now, nobody even, is even seeing a police officer but there's a lot of security there. In the estate, nobody is seeing a police officer but there's security. It is there. M Mr. Kagudi, how do you balance uh, community policing and privacy? Because these are some of the concerns that have been expressed by people that, you know, this uh, community policing and know your neighbor and all that sometimes goes against the constitution. Uh, privacy. Yes, uh, section, uh, no, article, article that one mm -hmm. is on privacy, is, 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 uh, is given. Mm -hmm. Is given is given uh, by the constitution privacy, and then freedom of association. But we are seeing this. This is a phenomenon where you you ignore at your peril. You ignore that uh, you don't want to know what your neighbor is doing at your peril. Supposing that neighbor want to bring themselves down, and they make a substance that they will bring your your that, that the whole of of the building down, including yourself. And you say that you want to recognize that privacy, watch out. That person who does not want to be known, the people are focusing on them more. And it is generally now accepted. Let's know one another. It's generally ac accepted. Let's form clusters. And in each cluster is worldwide. Is worldwide. Nobody is an island. And more so now, because we have another threat of uh, of, a, of his kind, coming from Al, coming from Al Shabab, and they are importing all those lessons they are getting from Al Qaeda and, uh, and so forth. So do not cling on that aspect of privacy. Take interest. There is another group which is saying, "I have never heard about you, Bakumi." Yeah, because you are the problem. If you do not know your chairman, you are the problem, because the others have formed except you. Go ask who is my chairman and get a brief from them. They, they are guidelines. Ask the chief to give you a copy of the guidelines. Ask the DO, ask uh, the OCPD, OCS. They all have those copies of guidelines to show the responsibilities. Responsibility one is you, you address the issue of the problem of crime. Number two, you prevent crime. Then you are, you are doing it in a, in a committee. And number three, you create what you call partnerships. So that those clusters eh, of households, they will become the foundation of security. Meaning, usalama msingi, utakuwa msingi, msingi usalama wanchi. That's what we are saying. That grassroots security will form the basis of security of the country. Mr. Kagudi makes a strong case for not only what he considers a responsible and patriotic media, but also a strong national government presence at the county level. Next on Spotlight. I, actually, before that time, we had not received what you call the Degwa Commission that came in to allow civil servants to do business mm. and opened all these gates for corruption. We were in the work and that's all. And that discipline, I think, is what we have lacked. So I still remember my time in the PC's office. If you miss part or all of this program, catch a repeat on Thursday night at half past nine. You can also listen on our Facebook page where you can also leave a comment. Keep the conversation going via Twitter at KBC English. The hashtag is Spotlight Kagudi. Please let us know which other personality that we featured on the program you'd like to listen to again. Send us a text starting with the word Spotlight to the number 22162. My name is Geoffrey Mungai. 